the figures were these kind of like round ball shape like uh, half uh, the half the height of uh, the, of the figure of the bloke and I thought to myself blimey that's a shepherd the shepherd's probably carrying two sheep so I thought to myself well if I gotta pull my pistol uh, and uh, aim at the bloke I could kill the shepherd to feed the sheep to the party and uh, we're gonna be uh, sleeping tonight with a uh, very spool. I'm Robert Kenley. I have been at Ventures for over 20 years and I've been classified as a rogue. I'm here to talk about uh, what it's like to be an adventurer and uh, a rogue. Uh, that's a long story. Originally I wasn't a, wasn't a rogue. Uh, I came from a family of artificers. Uh, my dad was an artificer, my mom was one of it, an artificer. Uh, mom was a prosthetics expert. Uh, dad was a uh, blacksmith. Uh, he was connected with a uh, dwarven blacksmith, which uh, was a rarity back then. It was a rarity back then for humans to be connected with dwarves in general, uh, much less dwarven blacksmiths, which are uh, just uh, gives you an uh, imagination of uh, the kind of stuff that he would uh, forge. Uh, yeah, my dad was uh, a really good uh, blacksmith, uh, not gonna lie. His connection uh, did uh, help him lend himself uh, uh, enough workers, enough uh, money, en uh, enough anything to start a mega forge. Uh, make a forge of his own. Uh, yeah, it was a very lucrative business back then. Uh, and uh, seeing that uh, Ma uh, was a prosthetics expert, uh, Dad was uh, good with weapons. Uh, back then, this was the only mega forge in miles upon miles of land that uh, could provide uh, pr uh, battle ready prosthetics, uh, which was very a very lucrative business uh, because it. Uh, Dragged in warriors, veterans, and uh, uh, adventurers. Uh, quite a lot of adventures back then. Uh, adventures got a lot of coffer, uh, so uh, uh, they were willing to spend a lot of uh, a lot of their good uh, good hard-earned money to uh, get themselves uh, brand new prosthetics and get back uh, right at it at them um, adventuring. Me, my dad were uh, grooming me for the family business and. Uh, each of them were teaching me their trade. Uh, Dad was teaching me how to uh, do smithing. Uh, Ma taught me how to do prosthetics. Uh, Which one were your best then? Neither. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> neither. <laughs> I was never uh, good with uh, with both of this stuff, and I was actually better with with smaller stuff, uh, with uh, smaller gears and uh, springs and, and all the kind of stuff, uh, clockwork stuff. Yeah, so they say he's got no use for that kind of stuff. Ma said uh, she's got some use for that kind of stuff. You know, uh, fingers, clockwork, this kind of stuff. Uh, all these uh, small kind of bits, uh, bits and bobs. Uh, so uh, much to dad's dismay, I fall more into mom's uh, uh, form of uh, uh, artificial, artificial uh, pursuits. All was fair and good. Uh, all was uh, working well until uh, until my twenty third birthday. Uh, I remember this. Uh, uh, we were, the town was uh, hit by uh, the clash, back then uh, it was pretty tough, uh, everybody was uh, hit hard by that, uh, our mega force specifically was uh, hit the hardest back then. See, day prior, uh, the clash had uh, this brilliant idea to decide to attack the capital and try to raid it. Uh, Needless to say, it didn't go well for them. Uh, now, needless to say, there were a lot of casualties on their side, but uh, along with casualties, there were uh, many mutilated uh, raiders uh, left with them. Now, uh, think about thing is for raiders that uh, you can't uh, have a raid without weapons, and you can't wield weapons with mutilated arms. So obviously, they need some prosthetics. And when they hit the town, the, uh, the primary uh, the pri their primary target was our mega forge. So uh, they uh, were like. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hit them. Now, me and my family were safe back then. Uh, uh, they uh, was uh, always ready for this kind of stuff. He would, uh, he had a bunker back uh, where we had a cellar. Uh, but uh, the mega forge itself, uh, uh, it was devastation. I, I remember, I remember leaving the bunker uh, the following day and just this pungent smell of like corpses, like burnt flesh and. Uh, 
all this uh, ruined uh, masonry and uh, and seeing all these ruins uh, only to only to realize uh, blimey yeah, uh, that's our mega forge that's the family's mega forge that's uh, been completely utterly dismantled everything and I mean everything was taken out uh, by these blood-sucking hyenas we were just left there with uh, out a job without a, a mega forge there was a stout man uh, he never faulted so uh, he just uh, started doing. Uh, so we just uh, opened a uh, smaller forge that uh, provided the right, uh, the provided armor and small arms and all that kind of stuff. Now, problem is, and uh, not a lot of people speak about it. Uh, the town was raided, so uh, because it was uh, recently raided, uh, no mega forge was left. That means there was a little to no incentive for warriors and adventurers uh, to come and. Uh, uh, purchase uh, any goods from there uh, but the pr uh, there wasn't uh, enough materials for prosthetics as well uh, and uh, yeah it ended up with uh, the family living from paycheck to paycheck and uh, uh, soon enough we found ourselves in poverty now so I remember exactly one year later on my 24th birthday I uh, came to my day I sat them down and said Ma day uh, today's my birthday I have been uh, thinking long and hard about a birthday gift that you could provide me and uh, I uh, have uh, an idea for a birthday gift and they say alright tell me the gift and I said the gift that, you, uh, that I'm gonna ask you to provide me with is uh, uh, to not say no to a decision that I'm gonna make now this is a pretty big gift uh, that I've asked them to, uh, to give me so they were thinking long and hard about this uh, and uh, an hour later they uh, came back to me and said all right uh, you're a grown adult uh, we believe in you son so uh, uh, we're not gonna say no to the uh, to your uh, so we're not gonna say no to the decision that you're about to make I said good I'm gonna join the adventures guild uh, and uh, the look on their face was uh, <laughs> it, 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 it <laughs> they were they went pale uh, <laughs> Well, see, we, we knew exactly what kind of uh, things and uh, horrible stuff the adventurers were going through. Because we have uh, serviced uh, a lot of adventurers who have uh, lost their limbs uh, during adventure, and uh, let's just say that lost limbs are the least of your problems uh, during adventure, uh, which I would uh, later discover during uh, my adventuring times. Right over here. They knew uh, that I was... Uh, uh, that I was uh, doing something that is quite rash, quite drastic, but uh, we were living in poverty, and uh, I knew that adventure would give us a lot of riches that would pr help and provide the family with uh, uh, the financial disposition that we were in. So uh, the following day, uh, I went to the Adventures Guild, signed myself in, and uh, then uh, I officially became an adventurer, got assigned to a party. Uh, fairly low level back then. So over the years, with completions of quests, some of, some of them were failures. With changes from party to party, uh, we have uh, I have picked up a few things, and uh, slowly I got I got um, what as they as they called it in the guild multiclassed, uh, and uh, slowly went from an artificer to a rogue, primarily rogue. That is uh, still an artificer, uh, but uh, I'm also classified as a but I'm primarily classified as a rogue. Oh, um, well, that is a hard question. Well, hard because uh, I assume uh, when uh, they say stolen magic item, uh, uh, I assume they mean uh, a magic item that I have uh, taken from someone and have uh, done it for personal use. I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm an artificer. Why would I steal someone else's magic items? I, I can make my own. I, I, I can do it better. I can do it uh, more, suit, more suitable for, for my needs. Like, why would I do that? But uh, that being said, I did have to steal a few magic items uh, here and there. Uh, well, it, it was more part of a quest. Uh, well, many quests. There, there were multiple quests where uh, I had to uh, steal uh, magical items. Um, in... Uh, no uh, situation of uh, where I had to steal magical items. Uh, uh, did I have any personal attachment to them? Well, uh, at best I didn't have any personal attachment. At worst, I absolutely, 
I absolutely loathed them. I, I, I hated them. I remember this uh, uh, one quest where you had to take, where you had to steal uh, this like magical uh, item, this uh, walking cane from uh, a layer of uh, one Lord Medino. Oh, it was absolutely dreadful. Uh, we were walking in a in a layer full of booby traps everywhere. One wrong step you make, one loud noise, you're gonna not only set up a lot of booby traps, but you're also gonna alert a like a swarm. And I'm talking about like like a room filled to the brim with uh, blood suckers. And eventually we did. The barbarian, god damn it, decided to rush the ho the whole swarm. The whole swarm was alerted. They were running at us. Took away half the party, we were just sprinting towards the room with a magical cane, trying to take it, and bloody hell, there were two iron golems, giant iron golems, just standing there guarding it. By some bloody miracle, I dodge all these iron golems, get to the room, get grab the cane, guess what, it's a cursed item. That means I cannot get, uh, get it out of my hands. What's worse, it took away my kneecaps. So here we are, three of the party members dead, that's half the party, I'm walking like a newborn ostrich, the, uh, the entire swarm of bloodsuckers is about to fall on us, and to, and to make th matters worse, guess who shows up? Lord Medino himself, the big bitch vampire himself, is about to show and gloat on us, and he decides to torture us to death, and he does. Needless to say, that was the second time I died. Well, luckily in the end, our cleric uh, did manage to, uh, to pull the whole mission off. Uh, Tempest bless him. Could have used Turner dead earlier, the blessed cunt. Oh god, um... See, uh, I was an adventurer. Uh, one thing you need to know about adventuring is, um... Nothing's off the table, right? Because, uh, see, when you form a party, when you form a party, alright? Uh, uh, the guildmaster doesn't care about uh, whether or not, whether you're a good person, whether you're a bad person, if you're a criminal, if you're undisciplined, if you're a disciplined person, may, if you're from what background, th they don't care about any of that. What they care about is uh, two things. Can you get the job done and uh, how well can you get it, right? Uh, I don't think that's a good system, uh, personally, because uh, many a time where there's been a situation where uh, yeah, the party has completed the quest, uh, they have defeated the BBEG, only for one of the party members to end up becoming the new BBEG, and uh, guess what, they learned from uh, the previous BBEG on uh, how to uh, defeat the other party members, they uh, eventually become a BBEG that is much harder to deal with uh, for their level, and uh, uh, well, level, uh, and uh, that just uh, helps breed uh, scarier and uh, better BBEGs, so uh, it's uh, quite paradoxical in a way how uh, uh, becoming an adventurer uh, helps you become a better BBEG for the future. It's a bit of a self-perpetuating uh, uh, system because uh, uh, you complete a quest and uh, because of uh, the BBEGs that you've created you've uh, basically created a brand new quest it's not a healthy system. I don't think it's a very it's very healthy for the economy for everyone involved. It's uh, it I, I find it to cause more trouble than uh, it's worth. Needs to say I digress. Where were we, morally? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, back when I started, there were no uh, issues with moral qualms. Uh, but as uh, you slowly uh, uh, adventure more and more, you uh, start uh, picking up on a few things because uh, every party has a bad apple, and the bad apple's uh, influence uh, rubs off on you. Uh, doesn't matter how uh, morally well-meaning you are. I've seen paladins, uh, uh, I've seen paladins uh, start doing some uh, morally questionable things. We had uh, this paladin who was our moral compass. I, I remember uh, who slowly got. Uh, Oh god, he, he slowly got straight into a uh, very dark path. Uh, eventually he became an outbreaker. Uh, I'm sorry, I need a bat. You alright? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm alright. Oh. 
You know, speaking of which, uh, I do remember this time back when uh, I was uh, partying with this uh, uh, paladin. Uh, it was at the end of the quest. Uh, we did complete the quest. Uh, we have uh, simply yet to report it to the adventure skill, and uh, we ran out of we ran out of rations. We were in hostile territory, uh, and uh, it was a long journey back. So uh, we were walking back. For three days, uh, we were starving without rations. Uh, the exhaustion starts kicking in when uh, you're not uh, properly replenished. Uh, and uh, remember, we were. We were getting, we were close to a village. Seeing as it was a, a hostile territory, we tried to avoid contact with uh, the local, the locals there. So uh, we were setting up camp, uh, close but not too close to the village. Uh, there was a hidden camp. Uh, we made sure not even to light, to light up fire back then. And uh, we took turns uh, taking guard as you normally do, uh, with a sufficient party. And uh, who was it first? Uh, was it the bar? Uh, I think it was the wizard. Yeah, it was uh, the wizard. She was uh, first in turn. So the wizard comes in, comes in takes guard. Nothing happens. Her, her shift ends. Uh, comes in the paladin's uh, shift. Uh, he takes guard. Nothing happens. Uh, his shift ends. Comes in my shift. Uh, no, nothing happens in uh, the beginning of the shift. But uh, as uh, the shift was leaning towards the end, I did spot from a distance uh, a sort of like figure, uh, figure, like walking towards us. I uh, was hiding, uh, branched my pistol, uh, making sure to keep an eye on uh, the figure. Uh, and as it was getting closer, the figure start, uh, slowly started looking like uh, this kind of a bloke with uh, a stick. And uh, then uh, uh, from that bloke with a stick, like two other figures uh, appeared right behind it. The figures were these kind of like round, bullish shaped, like uh, half uh, the half the height of uh, the, uh, of the figure of the bloke, and I thought to myself, "Blimey, that's a shepherd! And the shepherd's probably carrying two sheep." So I thought to myself, "Well, if I gotta pull my pistol uh, and uh, aim at the bloke, I could kill the shepherd, feed the sheep to the party, and uh, we're gonna be uh, sleeping tonight with uh, bellies full." So I thought to myself, who cares, it's a shepherd in a hostile territory, he's, he's probably gonna snitch on us. So right as I aimed it, I was about to shoot him, I hear our paladin from behind us going, hey, we got coffer, and I hear jingles of money like uh, rattling from behind me, uh, and, I, and the paladin uh, keeps on saying, uh, we got we got money, we got coffer, uh, well, we mean no harm, we just wanna uh, buy some food from you, uh, could, you uh, could you lend us uh, a hand? And I thought to myself, Blimey hell, our paladin just made things worse. Not only are we gonna be starving for tonight, but uh, he also alerted the, uh, uh, the shepherd in hostile territory. So uh, he's gonna alert the guards and we're gonna be going through a chase the whole night. And we're gonna be extra exhausted and we, we don't need any more exhaustion. We might die from exhaustion. I, I, like, uh, it's a real thing that adventures uh, go through sometimes. Some adventures go and die from exhaustion. You don't hear about that from, uh, from bars in the law because it's boring. It's not romantic. It's like it's an awful way to die. There's no glamour. There's no glory behind it. So I thought to myself, "Blimey, we're gonna die from exhaustion." Turns out the bloke was uh, very understanding. Uh, not only did he provide us with food, but uh, he also uh, brought us some hospitality. Not only were we well fed uh, that night, but we also uh, slept in some uh, good beds. Now the following day, when we woke up, I did notice that our paladin is. Uh, a bit sleepy. Don't mind the, don't mind the glasses. I uh, actually have a very good uh, eyesight and I have a keen understanding for details. So we saw in his de uh, so he was trying to hide it. He was very good at hiding this, but uh, you could still see that uh, uh, he was tired uh, and uh, it seemed like there was a little bit of lack of sleep. So when we were alone, uh, I came up to him uh, and uh, asked him, "Were you watching me during my shift?" And uh, he just uh, looked at the side, um, and uh, then uh, and then with a little bit of reluctance, he just uh, came back to me and said, uh, "Yeah." Uh, and I asked him, uh, "What? What you do that? Yeah, you look you look terrible. You look like shit. Uh, you get yourself exhausted. Oh, oh, why? Why would you do that?" And uh, he said something I'll never forget. Uh, he put his hand on my shoulder, I looked me straight in the eye, and said, "Robbie." We have a wizard who's a necromancer who doesn't give two twi twiddling thumbs 
about uh, uh, the sanctity of burial. We have a warlock who sold his soul to dark forces that are beyond our comprehension and could possibly end the world. You, Robbie, are a straight man. Now I've seen the kind of stuff that our party does to straight men like you, Robbie. If there is a soul that can be saved in this entire party, it is yours, Robbie. And with the power invested in me, I swear to you, Robbie, I'll do everything in my power to make sure that you won't fall like the, uh, like the ones before you. And I never did. And I, and, and I thank him. I thank him every day of my life for doing this, this enormous favor for me. And, uh, and it just makes this fall all the more tragic. It's, it's awful. It's, it just, uh, it just, it, it kills me what happened to him. What is that supposed to mean? Shimita or rapier? Like what? Uh, which one do I prefer to use? A gun. I prefer to use a gun. <laughs> I I'm an artificer. What what can I say? If I if I get to use a gun, I would I would prefer to use a gun. Like, what kind of question is this? Like, the one you use, does this youth not like care about daggers? Like, good old fashioned daggers. If you're a rogue, you're, you're gonna use the dagger. You, uh, forget about rapists and shimitars. Dagger is the way to go. Like, you're a rogue. You're already gonna be using utility, and um, well, daggers, uh, they're good. Like the. Like, sure, I understand. It's not the same kind of damage, and uh, when you're adventuring, you do want to go for uh, better forms of damage. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just use a crossbow. Just use a hand, cr hand crossbow. Keep your distance with the enemy. It, 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 that's, the, it, that's the best tactic as a rogue you, you can have. And, get, and if you get uh, up to two up close and personally, well, you, you, use a, you use a dagger. Like, a dagger is so useful, it's so versatile. Like, again, not the same amount of damage, but... Uh, it's not a war weapon, meaning that uh, a lot of places are not gonna conf uh, are not gonna confiscate you for uh, uh, for your dagger. Like some will. Uh, I'm not saying that, that all places uh, will not confiscate uh, your dagger, but even with the uh, with these exceptions, like uh, see see the size of this. Like a shimitar is like a shimitar is this size. A rapier is even uh, longer. Like uh, well, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but still, it, it, they're pretty big weapons. This one is small, it's uh, like, here, it's easy to conceal, like, right there, like, yeah, I I'm not considering it the, uh, the best way, like, uh, but you understand the, uh, the concept of it, right? Right. So, uh, uh, when uh, asking me what kind of melee weapon I would prefer to use, like, up, up close and personal, I think it's, uh, like, uh, the best kind of weapon. Uh, 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 you're putting me in a bit of a loop. Uh, okay, l let's assume that uh, I'm in a bit of a risky situation and uh, on the floor there's like, uh, we got ourselves a shimita or a rapier, like, uh, uh, l uh, let's put ourselves in this uh, uh, weird situation. Like, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this case, uh, probably a shimita. It's still a bladed weapon. It's the closest thing that I have to a dagger, but... Uh, Still not the very most, uh, not the most comfortable for me, but uh, uh, probably a shimita. That being said, uh, if you ask me which weapon do I what, what do I prefer going against, uh, there would be a rapier. Rapiers are like uh, 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 easier to dodge, like uh, uh, well, easier to parry you with uh, a dagger. Like uh, say a shimita, like you have to wield a shimita. When you will, when you attack with a shimita, you can only slash because. Uh, uh, it's kind of uh, awkward to step with it. You, you still can, but it's kind of awkward. But when you attack, you attack with your entire arm, like this kind of like arcing motion kind of like uh, attack. It has a lot of momentum, and uh, it's not pleasant to parry with uh, a dagger. As opposed to a rapier, a rapier like uh, you point and poke, like poke, like like this. There's not a lot of momentum behind it, uh, making it easier to parry with, especially when you're not uh, you're not parrying against the momentum. You're parrying uh, uh, you're parrying like a perpendicular to the momentum. So it's like uh, it goes towards here, and you just parry it like this. It's a lot less energy to exert. Um, that being said, because the, like a stab, it's uh, harder to uh, 
predict, harder to see, harder to predict. Like say, uh, like uh, if I hold to the uh, camera obscura, uh, if I hold shimita uh, and I hold like this, like uh, see as I'm uh, going from here to here, it's like uh, I'm exaggerating right here, but if I go from here to here, it's like you can see, you can predict the motion of uh, the attack, but if I go for a rapier, it's like uh, it goes closer, 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 and oh, you've been stabbed. It's like it's uh, hard to see that way. Uh, your perspective is uh, is uh, a little bit obscured because of the direction of the attack. But uh, still, for me, for my uh, great perception, again, don't mind the glasses. The, I could just uh, easily notice them. So uh, for me, it was uh, uh, much more, much less uh, of a uh, uh, horrible experience uh, dodging rapiers. Not saying that I wasn't stabbed or anything, but. Uh, uh, it's much e it's much easier at least for me to avoid them and it should be easier for rogues to avoid them as well if you know the right stuff uh, look uh, for me I did not choose the rogue life the rogue life chose me uh, like I said before uh, I was uh, an artificer I came from a family of artificers I had multiclassed into a rogue uh, by uh, uh, virtue of joining the adventure skill and I joined the adventure skill uh, out of necessity uh, to get riches which eventually I did uh, got riches for my family that being said uh, th uh, that does uh, that don't mean that uh, there has to be a life for everyone like not everyone has to go through adventure to become a rogue uh, so uh, my advice um, I have two advices actually uh, one uh, don't join the adventure skill now, no, seriously, uh, it's a grueling, harsh life. It's uh, we. Uh, it's uh, I've seen. I've seen the kind of uh, things that adventurers had to go through. Well, like I said before, uh, I was uh, helping Ma with uh, the prosthetics she was making uh, back when uh, Dad's Mega Forge was still up. I've seen the kind of scars and uh, horrible things that the adventurers go through and. Uh, it's it's not a pretty sight like uh, it it helps you it, from an early age it helps you demystify uh, the kind of uh, uh, life and uh, glamour that is uh, supposedly taught to you by uh, uh, guild propaganda it's uh, it's not a glamorous life at all it's uh, quite a grueling one horrible one and I've experienced it in first hand and much more that being said uh, well it, some of you might uh, enjoy adventure skill some uh, for for some it might uh, be for some for some people adventure skill might be, might just be for them and uh, in that case well uh, i would say uh, uh, adventure skill uh, sure it's a good it's a good place to to learn how to become a rogue but uh, there are schools for that nowadays uh, i'd say go for that it's much safer than just uh, going adventuring and uh, much much better than uh, going for criminal stuff criminal activities it's uh don't don't do that don't don't it's uh, it's not worth it uh for you you, uh, you may never know uh, the kind of stuff you uh, you'll go through i've seen the kind of stuff uh, that uh, the, the crime syndicates go through uh some of them were cults uh they're like sacrificial kind of cults not, uh, not good stuff but yeah uh, uh if you're gonna go for rogue uh just uh uh, go for go for a rogue school. Uh, the second advice is, uh, well, you hear a lot of this like uh, uh, doubt and debate on whether or not it's worth it to like become a rogue because uh, some would say, oh, maybe a rogue's life is not just is not for me. Maybe the class is not for me. And uh, others go like, yeah, what if I spec into rogue so much that uh, multi classing will be unviable? It, it's it, it's bullshit. It's it's all guild bullshit. Forget about multi-classing, forget about uh, uh, leveling. It, 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 it's it's guild stuff. You, you're not a guild member. You, you're not you're not adventure. You're not a guild member. It just it shouldn't bother you at all. Because uh, here's the thing: all this uh, multi-classing and uh, leveling and all this kind of stuff that uh, you've been uh, you've heard uh, here and there. It's uh, it's guild stuff. It's uh, it's data that was collected by scholars and diviners to optimize for the best uh, party composition for a uh, pro uh, for a proper questing and adventuring 
Like, uh, it's, it's, it's not realistic. Like, for example, I know this one guy who is a wizard who, uh, if he would have joined the Adventure Skid right now, uh, because of his uh, uh, abilities, his position, his uh, what they call HP, uh, he would be considered a level 5 uh, wizard. Now, what is a level 5 wizard? It's a wizard that just learned how to cast Fireball. Now, Fireball is an amazing spell. It's uh, a very popular spell amongst uh, Adventure Wizards. Uh, because of its uh, uh, combat usability, and it's it, it truly is powerful. I've, se I've seen the, the might of uh, fireballs out there, but uh, compared to what he can do, compared to what the wizard I know can do, uh, he knows he knows much better spells than uh, than fireball. Like for example, he he knows uh, how to summon minions. He knows minion swarm, which is like what a level eight spell uh, or something like that. It, like that is not a spell that a 5th level wizard knows, that I can tell you for sure, and I can guarantee you, and I've seen him cast uh, Media Swarm before, and I uh, have detected that uh, it came from him, it's, uh, it's not some uh, pilot check or anything, no, I, uh, I, uh, we have the capabilities to like, uh, uh, detect where the magical sources come from, and it was from him, so uh, this whole guild system, this whole uh, leveling, multiclassing, uh, it's primarily, it's, it's bull, it's complete bull, bull crap. It's, uh, it's done for statistic, again, it's done for statistic purposes, for uh, quest optimizations, for party optimizations. Uh, and uh, I, I say, uh, if, you, if you're considering going for uh, learning how to be a rogue, just go for it, just go for a uh, rogue school. There are gonna be skills that you're gonna learn that are gonna be useful for you uh, during your life, during your daily life. I can guarantee you that. And, and they don't have to be about the adventure. I can guarantee you that too. And these are my two advice for people who are considering to become rogues. Like, uh, don't join the adventure skill and just do it. You, there's no, there are no downsides to, uh, to learning how to become a rogue. Do it. Just don't do it like me. Do it safely. You have the abilities, you have the skills for it. Go and become a rogue safely today.